Hello everyone, welcome to yet again another new product post. Um, we have a bit of an interesting product post this week. We have a demo that didn't quite work out right, but is still pretty interesting. So um, we'll get to that demo a little later on. And we've also got a couple products, so let's go ahead and dive right in and see what we've got. So Sugru may not be very new to many of you, um, but Sugru has made a nice and welcome change. Um, they now carry it in an eight pack instead of the 12 pack. So as before, they're carrying it in um, these 12 individual little packs. Now they have it in eight, so it doesn't expire as quickly. Some of you may or may not know that Sugru actually has an expiration date down here. Um, the problem was is that we would get it from Sugru, and then we would ship it to, let's say, our distributors, and then if you were buying it from one of our distributors, then it would be further shipped to there. So if we have a limited shelf life and a limited you know, expiration date, it would sit on a shelf for quite a while going through company to company to company. So this is actually nice because it's a smaller pack, so we'll go through them quicker and it won't take you as long to use. So when you get it, you know, you'll have a few months or however long to use it and you know, you won't have this big pack. So let me open this up and just show everyone what um, is inside one of these um, packs. So we've got a little instruction booklet, some stickers, yeah, I love you some stickers. And then here are the packs. Now the packages come in these lovely primary colors. So these primary colors can be mixed and matched to form other colors, which is pretty handy of course. Um, got a couple of each color and we've also got a black and a white in there. If you've never used Sugru, it is essentially a combination of like a silicone caulk and a um, epoxy. So it starts out really gummy and kind of nasty, um, but then when it dries, it forms this hard, almost kind of rubbery coating, and it is nearly impossible to get off. If you bond it to a surface like this table or something, we would have a grip on this table for life. Um, we'd have to like grind it or scrape it off when it's done. But it has this nice kind of, you know, rubbery texture to it. Um, they have you know, a picture of using it like on a camera grip. I wouldn't really recommend using it on an expensive camera that you like a lot, but um, you know, if you have a camera that you want to do kind of a custom grip on, you can throw some on there and it will not peel off, um, you know, like car keys, stuff like that. Um, it is really good as an adhesive, so it can actually be used to bond things together as well as forming a grip or you know, maybe even kind of a, you know, accent to an enclosure, things like that. So go ahead and check out the um, smaller eight pack that we have. And if you've never used Sugru, add a pack to your next order and give it a shot. And here we've got um, a little PCB speaker. This is used to mount directly to a PC board, or you can even mount into a breadboard, as we'll show you. Um, it's about 30 millimeters in diameter. And the um, headers here on the back are 0.1 inch spaced. So it's really convenient for a breadboard or, you know, just standard design. Um, the power output is not that much. It's about 0.1 watts. Um, I think it can peak at like 0.2 watts. It is 8 ohm, so it is pretty easy to drive. And um, I think it has a sensitivity of 80 decibels, um, so it really isn't that loud. But if you need just a basic like indicator, um, a beeper, a buzzer, um, something that plays nice little MIDI tones, things like that, um, this is nice because it can be easily mounted directly to your board and you don't have to worry about, you know, wiring up a separate speaker and how to mount that speaker, things like that. If we're doing the flatus over again, maybe we would have used like two of these spaced out or something like that. Um, so let me hook one of these up and show you what it sounds like. So here we've got uh, Mike's TARDIS box um, that we had in our elevator. Um, that every time the elevator would move, it would make the sound. Um, we've got the speaker over here plugged into a breadboard and then just you know plugged back into the box so i'm gonna apply power and we'll get to see what this little speaker sounds like oh yeah that's nice so there you go that's what it sounds like it is not incredibly loud so i just you know want to throw that out there um, but as a buzzer um, you know, something like that that just plays a basic tone, like, you know, think of the Arduino tone library just throwing out of um, confirmation or a non-confirmation tone. Um, something like that would be perfect for it. And of course, you can fit it into the breadboard nicely, so it's really easy to work with. So if you're looking for just a basic, you know, buzzer or PC speaker, check out the PCB mount speaker. And last up, we've got this guy. 
Now, if any of you religiously watch our videos, this might look pretty familiar to you. This is something that we have actually used before, but now we actually have a good stock of them, a good supply of them, and we found a reliable supplier. This is the spark gap igniter that you have seen in the Scorpion video that we had um, a couple months ago. Um, what this does is it's um, essentially a transformer that takes one voltage in, really steps it up, and gives you a much higher voltage out. Um, we don't really know what the output voltage is of this. We didn't get a good data sheet. We know that it does create about a half inch gap on a spark. Um, the beauty about this is it only takes five volts in. So if you apply five volts to this, you will get a pretty good gap on the other end of it. Um, like I said, about a half an inch, and it's a very solid spark as you will see here in a bit. Um, we do have a demo for this, um, although the demo is not exactly what we wanted it to be, and let me explain why. We order these products, we get samples, and then we get the samples in, we evaluate them, and then we you know, place our order. Um, it may take upwards of a month or two for that order to come in, and then once we get it in, we actually have about um, a week time before we get it in to where it goes live on the website. So in that meantime, um, this came in on Friday last week. Um, this came in, we cataloged it, put it in our receiving shelves, put it in bins, got it ready to sell. Um, we had to write a description, we had to take some pictures, we had to do some testing, make sure everything was legit. And this video that we're doing right now is like Thursday afternoon or Thursday about you know noon. So we really only had about three days to do all of that that I just mentioned in addition to doing a demo on this. So. Whenever you're watching these videos and you see us do a demo or you see us do a build, keep in mind most of the time we've only had maybe a day or two max to do that build. Um, so that is the case with this build as well. So we do have a demo for this. It doesn't work exactly how we wanted it to, but it is still very interesting. It involves a lot of high current, a lot of sparks, and well, let's just go in my office and check it out. So many of you are pretty familiar with um, seven segment displays such as this. And what we've decided to do is actually create a seven segment display using these guys. So basically what we have here is we've got three different stacks of plastic that we have laser cut. Um, if you can look closely in here, we've actually got right angle headers which are protruding through and that's what forms our spark gaps in here. Um, so this whole thing is sandwiched so that Hopefully the spark wouldn't travel from here to here, although we think it's actually eroded through the plastic and is actually jumping in between the layers, so that's not great. Um, here we had some um, paper that we had on the top to just make it easier to see, and we just ripped it off so we could show you what's inside here. And then on the back, they're terminated into the spark gap igniters. Those are wired back into here into a bank of MOSFETs, which are controlled by the Arduino. And this whole thing is powered with a 250 watt supply at 5 volts. So that supplies about 50 amps worth of current. We use a little over 20. So that is how the whole system works. Um, now the problem was it didn't really work the way we expected it or wanted it to work. Um, we can get one segment lit perfectly fine, but when we try to light another segment, it has a little bit of crosstalk and it just there's too much going on here to do a full seven segment display. So let's just give it a couple demos and show what it does do. Let's turn it on again so you can see a better look at this without the paper. There you have it. We did not have time to do an acronym for this or some clever name. It's, it's scary. Um, you know, a little thing this big drawing 20 amps. And um, the other thing I will say is it might not come across well in the video. We don't know how this is going to work in the video. but. This is well over 105 decibels, and I say that because the meter we have peaks out at 105, so it is beyond 105 decibels from, you know, a few feet away. This thing is extremely loud. Everyone in the building can hear it every time it turns on, and it draws 20 amps, so I don't know. 
We didn't get it to do exactly what we thought it would do. We didn't get it to be a full seven segment display. But we've had almost everyone in the building coming by to see exactly what this is. So it's still pretty cool. Um, we might work on it a little bit more and see if we can tweak it and actually get it to display. Um, although as a clock, I don't know if that would be a really good idea. But in any event, this is one of the uses for the igniters. So we encourage you to try and figure out your own way to use them. And um, if anyone wants to tackle this project, send it to me. I'd be really curious to see if anyone can get one of these actually working um, the way we tried. So we realized not everyone's going to be using this in the configuration that we had in, so we wanted to show you just what one of the spark gap igniters looked like hooked up to a 5 volt supply in a simple configuration. So we've got a third hand holding our two um, wires about a half an inch apart into here, running 5 volts. Let's turn it on. Let's see what the gap looks like. Pretty fun, pretty loud. And you can see if we go out a little bit farther, it just makes this nice whining sound. And if we go a little bit closer, that happens. So there you have it, Spark Gap Igniter. There you have it. This is our product selection for this week. Check out the smaller pack of Sugru, check out the PCB mount speaker, and I'm sure everyone's going to be adding one of these to their order, so I don't even have to say it. So there you have it. Um, thanks for watching, and um, hope you like the demo, and we'll see you again next week with another Friday new product post, and have fun at Maker Faire.